Hey, this is Matthew with Another World Terraria. Welcome to part two of my tutorial series on how to grow immersed Bucephalandra like a boss. In this video, I'm going to teach you about containers and ventilation. By the way, if you haven't seen part one, go ahead and watch that video before this one. The ideal containers for Busi are going to be waterproof, good at containing humidity, allow you to adjust the ventilation, and they're going to be big enough that the plants have some breathing room. The two options I prefer the most are plastic storage bins and plastic deli containers. I'll give you a little bit of information about each. Plastic storage bins are what I use for almost all of my plants. Most plastic storage bins will work, but pay attention to the lid. The lid must be clear, not colored, and it must be snug fitting. Some brands to look for are Sterilite, Ziploc, and Rubbermaid. If you can afford it, I'd spend a little bit more and get some nicer bins with better construction and features. The ones that have clips to hold the lid on are the best because one, they maintain humidity better, and two, if they're bumped, the lid is going to stay in place so you will avoid any accidental overventilation and drying out. My favorite bins are the kind with a foam seal, but they're usually more expensive. I also like them because they fit three across perfectly on my plant racks. Plastic deli containers are great for quarantining new plants to prevent spreading disease or pests to the rest of your collection. They can also be used to get more grow space because they can fit in small areas between larger bins and tanks, around windowsills, and so forth. There are many different types of deli containers. You can find them at restaurant supply stores and also on Amazon. Feel free to experiment with different sizes and shapes. The ones I like the most are made for ice cream sundaes. They have a dome-like lid which gives the plant some growing space and offers nice visibility. A couple of other container ideas for Boosie are 1. Seed trays and 2. Aquarium tanks. Seed trays have similar attributes as deli containers, but the disadvantages are that the lids aren't as secure, and in general they cost more compared to deli containers. The benefit is that the seed trays are usually larger than deli containers, so you'll have a little bit more grow space. You can set up a glass tank just like any other container with the plants directly in the substrate on the bottom, or you can put the plants in individual containers that are set into the tank. I'm sure there are many other containers that would work for Busi, so feel free to experiment. Let's move on to discuss ventilation. Generally, I approach ventilation and pretty much everything else in this hobby as educated trial and error. Based on your knowledge of the specific plants that you're going to be putting in a particular bin and your best guess as to how the various factors, which I'll go over in this section, might affect the ventilation needs, you estimate a starting amount of ventilation. Then you make adjustments as needed based on the results over time. As a rule of thumb for Boosie, it's best to start with a small amount of ventilation and then very gradually increase that over time if needed. It's very important to understand the relationship between ventilation and humidity. All else being equal, increased ventilation will result in lower humidity and decreased ventilation will result in higher humidity. You should also remember that less ventilation and therefore less air movement and higher humidity increases the risk of mold. Throughout this tutorial series, there are a few tips here and there on how to combat mold. Factors to consider. Some of the many factors to consider when determining a starting point for your ventilation in a particular bin and some very generalized notes about them are Container size. The smaller the container, the less ventilation you're going to want because the minimal volume of air and substrate is going to dry out much faster. Very large containers can have slightly more ventilation because the greater volume of air, substrate, and plant matter is going to help maintain humidity. Substrate type and its water and humidity retention properties. For substrates that retain water and humidity more effectively, ventilation can be slightly more than substrates which are more prone to drying out. Amount and frequency of watering and misting. Ventilation can be slightly greater if there is more frequent misting, but don't go overboard on either of these. You can experiment to find what works best for you, but usually I prefer to have less ventilation and less frequent misting. In hot weather, I sometimes flip this ratio slightly, increasing ventilation and misting more to try and combat mold growth. Ambient temperature and humidity outside the container. If conditions are cooler and drier outside the container, which will usually be the case, ventilation should be kept to a lesser amount than if it's warmer and humid outside the container. Density of planting and growth form of the plants. Plants that are more densely planted, are taller, and have broader leaves are all things that are going to decrease air movement and create pockets of higher humidity. In this case, ventilation should probably be increased slightly to reduce the risk of mold and disease. Ventilation methods. 
I use two ventilation methods. Method one is holes and method two is lid propping. Here's some info about both of those. Holes. When drilling holes in plastic containers of any kind, I prefer to use a drill bit that is designed specifically for plastic. The specialized bits go through the material much faster and cleaner than a standard drill bit that is made for wood. I bought various sizes of plastic drilling bits from a store called Tap Plastics. I would advise experimenting with ventilation hole size, quantity, location, and pattern over time and on different bins and plants. Note that having multiple ventilation holes, especially when they're directly across from each other, is going to significantly increase ventilation due to an effect called cross-ventilation, and the effect becomes more pronounced the larger the holes are. You can use the concept to your advantage by strategically placing holes to create pathways where you want the airflow to be greater. The larger the vent holes you make, the nearer to the top they should be, so you don't have direct air exchange on the plants lower down, which can lead to dried foliage. You can adjust ventilation after initial setup by putting duct tape or packing tape over the holes on the outside of the container. This works for any size hole from tiny ones all the way up to large holes with screens in them like I use in my bioactive grow bins. Lid propping. You can increase ventilation by putting something over the lip of the container to keep the lid propped up slightly. The larger the gap, the more ventilation and airflow there's going to be. The object used to prop the lid should be plastic, rubber, or closed cell foam so it doesn't absorb moisture. On bins with flip up clips, you might be able to use the clips to prop the lid up on one or both sides. Some designs work better than others for this method. On some bins, depending on the lid design, you might be able to just keep the lid slightly ajar or slide it back a little bit. In those cases, you don't need to put anything under the lid to create ventilation. Be careful not to ventilate too much because the plant foliage and substrate might dry out. For high ventilation situations, you're probably going to need to mist the plants more often and keep the substrate a bit more saturated. If you're going the aquarium tank route, you'll want to have a glass canopy lid with a hinge, and for ventilation, you can use the lid propping method by putting small pieces pieces of rubber on the inner rim ledge. Now I'm going to show you the ventilation on a few of my different Boosy bins so that you can get some real world examples and have a better idea of what kind of things I do for my plants. One thing that you'll notice is that there's a wide variety of ventilation setups on a lot of these different bins and so it doesn't seem like it should be but that's the way it is because every bin is different. You'll find that with experience. Alright so I've got ventilation holes here in three then I have one and then I have two in the middle and then one there and then three again and those are about I don't know maybe a little bit over an eighth of an inch not quite a quarter inch and then these are bigger holes I've got three on the side one two three and they are slightly larger than a quarter inch and I have those pretty close to the top of the bin three of the same size up there and a couple down lower and then the other end got the three and then same setup with three and then two and that's this bin right here the reason why there's so many holes and they're so large in this bin is because I originally had some problems with mold it was due to the plants were imported and um, there was some kind of mold on it and it was just not doing well even though I you know tried to clean it off so anyway now the plants are doing really well and I just left the ventilation and they seem to be doing great everything is in balance it's perfect now this bin right here is one that I recently set up and I generally start with a very small amount of ventilation at the beginning and then I increase it gradually if needed so right here you can see I've just got three very small little holes right here on the top on that end and I also have three very small holes on this end near the top and that's all there is in this huge bin and that is this bin I'll show you this really quick this bin right here is my most established bin I've had it the longest as far as Bucephalandra go so I've got quite a few holes across the top here. I've got a lot going in rows just all the way across kind of an even spaced grid of holes I would say. Again that's the between an eighth of an inch and a quarter of an inch. Uh, and then I've got three small ones across the top 
or uh, you know towards the top on the side there and same thing on the other side three and then let me see what I have on the end here yeah and then I've got uh, a little small hole right here and then a small hole on that end and it's the same on the other side as well and that is this bin right here All right, this bin right here is a shallow tray style of bin, and it actually does not have any ventilation in it whatsoever. No ventilation holes on this bin. This is an interesting, unique little bin here. It's a little tray bin as well, but the interesting thing is that I did some screen ventilation. I did a small little uh, I think that's a one inch ventilation screen on that end and then in the opposite corner I also did one on that one and then I kinda get like a cross ventilation going through the bin there and that's these guys right here it's just right next to the Boosie bin I'm just gonna quickly give you a peek into one of my bins where I'm transitioning aquarium plants into an immersed state and I'm gonna be using these for various Wabi Kusa, Kusamono and so forth so those are starting to look really nice and that immersed aquatic plant bin right there has a large two inch ventilation screen and then I take the lid and I just prop that up a little bit on occasion and kind of ventilate it just want to show you one more setup here. This is just a typical example of how I would grow Boosie in a deli container. I would just have a couple little holes that I cut with an X-Acto knife or you could drill holes with a plastic drilling bit. And then you just set your plant in there with your desired substrate. And then I would just keep that on there and make sure that it doesn't dry out. I use this for quarantining new plants. When I get like individual plants like this, I'll just quarantine them in there and keep them away from my rest of my collection. But you can definitely grow your entire collection in these. You can just have a whole bunch and line them up on a rack. 